In this video, I do a first set of scientific tests on the Aura Ring 3. First, I test the sleep tracking of the Aura Ring 3 using an EEG monitor on two different people. Second, I test the daytime heart rate accuracy. Third, I test the nighttime heart rate and heart rate variability. And finally, I'll compare all of this to the previous generation, the Aura Ring 2. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now the Aura Ring 3 is supposed to have improved sleep tracking compared to the Aura Ring 2. Unfortunately, it will not become available until 2022. However, they might have already made some changes to the sleep tracking algorithm, so let's test that. For the sleep test, I wore the Aura Ring 3 to bed for two nights and at the same time I also wore this EEG device called the Dream 2 headband and finally I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device can actually measure your brain waves and is therefore ideal for measuring your sleep stages. Additionally, a scientific paper showed that the Dream 2 headband is good at measuring your sleep stages. Let's take a look at the results. Let's start by checking if the Aura Ring 3 predicts the correct sleep stages at the right time and that is what is displayed here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device and on the left the sleep stages according to the Aura Ring 3. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see if the Aura Ring 3 predicted the correct sleep stage at the right time. I'll highlight all the stages that are correctly predicted in green as I'm explaining the results. First of all, we see that about 88% of what was deep sleep was also correctly predicted as being deep sleep. So that's pretty good. Most deep sleep I had was also detected as deep sleep. The rest of the deep sleep was detected as light sleep by the Aura Ring 3. Now this is one night for example, with the three deep sleep segments marked in purple. On top you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the time of night, and on the vertical axis we have the different sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. On the bottom you can see a similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded using the Aura Ring 3. Here we see that the Aura Ring 3 did indeed detect all of my deep sleep, however it also predicted some extra deep sleep while I was actually in light sleep in these moments. Now for this second night we basically see the same thing. The deep sleep I had was mostly correctly detected, however quite some extra deep sleep was also recorded. Light sleep was detected less well, with about 50% of light sleep correctly detected as light sleep. If light sleep was confused, it was mostly confused with deep sleep and REM sleep. Now the deep sleep makes sense as we already saw some extra deep sleep was detected based on the individual nights. Now REM sleep detection is the worst characteristic of the current Aura Ring 3 sleep tracking algorithm, with only about a third of the REM sleep correctly detected as being REM sleep. Most of what was REM sleep was actually detected as being light sleep by the Aura Ring 3. Now this part makes up a total of 60% of the REM sleep. REM sleep is marked here in red for the first night, and as you can see, the REM sleep of the Aura Ring 3 seems to be more or less randomly distributed throughout the night, and it doesn't match the four REM sleep segments I had in reality. And we basically see the same thing for this second night right here, where the match is overall pretty bad for the REM sleep. This also means we cannot see the sleep cycles based on just the data from the Aura Ring. Now to see the sleep cycles, I added non-REM sleep in blue, and again marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep sleep and light sleep together called non-REM REM and always ends in REM. Now because of the bad REM sleep detection, there's basically no way of seeing the sleep cycles based on just the data from the Aura Ring 3. Awake detection was pretty okay with almost 60% of the awake time correctly detected as awake time. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep, which makes sense since light sleep is the closest to being awake out of all the sleep stages. If we look at this first night, I only had two shorter awakenings, and both of them were missed by the Aura Ring 3. However, most of the longer awakenings for the second night were detected, though still some were missed. Likely those were the moments I was awake but I was moving less. And it also detected an extra awakening here at the end of the night. So how do these results compare to the results for the Aura Ring 2? Let's take a look. An overview of that is displayed here. On the left are the results for the Aura Ring 3, and on the right the results for the Aura Ring 2. As you can see, the results are very similar. Both devices detect most of what was deep sleep correctly at roughly 88 and 82%. Light sleep detection was okay-ish for both, at about 50 to 60% correct. However, REM sleep detection is the real issue, with only about 35% correctly detected for both devices. Finally, awake detection is okay for both, even a bit better for the Aura Ring 2 based on these tests, with about 60% correct for the Aura Ring 3 and about 75% correct for the Aura Ring 2. However, I expect this difference is more by chance than an actual difference in the accuracy for both devices. However, all the data I showed you so far are just based on measurements on myself. Luckily, one of my colleagues, Stefan Reichel, is also really into self-tracking and also ordered an Aura Ring 3. So I convinced him to also wear a Dream 2 headband for four nights while he was also wearing the Aura Ring 3. Also, Stefan just started a really cool blog, which I'll tell you more about later in the video. However, let's first take a look at the results. An overview of that is displayed here. On the left are my results, and on the right the results for the four nights that Stefan wore the Dream 2 and the Aura Ring 3. 
As you can see, the results for Stefan are slightly better than for mine overall. Both of us have good deep sleep tracking with around 90% of the deep sleep correctly detected as being deep sleep. Light sleep detection is actually slightly worse for Stefan with less than 50% of light sleep correctly detected as being light sleep and a lot of light sleep being confused with deep sleep. However, REM sleep detection is slightly better for him with about 50% of REM sleep correctly detected where for me this was only 35%. However, about 50% correctly detected REM sleep is not that great. He also had better awake detection and about 80% correctly detected, which is more along the lines of what I saw for my Aura Ring 2 results. So the results for the sleep tracking of Stefan are slightly better than mine, though still not great. To put these results into perspective, let's compare them to the results of a number of other devices I've tested in the past. That is what is displayed right here. Now this graph contains a lot of information, so let me try to explain what you see here. Along the horizontal axis we have the average accuracy over the four individual sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep and awake. On the vertical axis we have the accuracy of the worst sleep stage. I added this since many devices compromise the accuracy of one sleep stage to benefit the accuracy of all the others. For those of you that follow my channel, these data come from tests I've done over myself over the last few years. The best device would have 100% for both of the axes, so the better a device, the more to the top right it is. As you can see, based on these metrics, the best devices are different Fitbits, the Whoopstrap 3.0 and 4.0, and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. The Aura Ring 3 performs marginally better than some of the other devices I've tested, but it does not come close to the best devices on the top right right here. If we now plot the results for my two Aura Ring 2s in the same plot, we see there's not much difference between the Aura Ring 3 and the Aura Ring 2, at least for the testing on me. This again makes me think that the Aura Ring 2 and 3 are using similar algorithms and sensors. Now, if we plot Stefan's Aura Ring 3 results in here, we see that these are better than mine, though still definitely not as good as some of the other devices. Next, we can also plot Stefan's Aura Ring 2 results in here, where he wore both the Aura Ring 2 and the Dream 2 EEG headband for a single night. Now this is slightly worse than his Aura Ring 3 results, however I suspect that this is random variation enhanced by the fact that we just have a single night of data for this. Next, for the Aura Ring 2, we can also plot another person's results in here, and that is what you see here. Now Max is one of my YouTube followers, and he's also really into self-tracking and does similar tests to mine on his blog, which you should really check out, but more on that later. As you can see, Max's results for the Aura Ring 2 are close to Stefan's results for the Aura Ring 3. Finally, to confirm that indeed the Fitbits tend to perform better, let's add Max's results for the Fitbit Charge 4 and the Fitbit Charge 5 in the same plot. And those results are displayed here. As you can see, indeed also for Max, the Fitbit Charge 4 and Charge 5 perform better than the Aura Ring 2, and are in general in the same area as my results for the Fitbits. Overall, all the results for the Aura Ring 2 and 3 appear to be in somewhat the same area on this plot, and the same goes for all the Fitbit results. One of the new features already introduced in the Aura Ring 3 is daytime heart rate tracking. This is made possible by the new green LEDs built into the Aura Ring 3. I tested the daytime heart rate tracking by wearing the Polar H10 ECG chest strap during the day. I chose the Polar H10 since it's generally considered one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. The Aura Ring 3 takes measurements of your daytime heart rate every 5 minutes for a full minute. Aura says that to preserve battery and maximize accuracy, a heart rate measurement will only be taken if the ring detects optimal conditions. Now, optimal conditions are basically defined by low movement and a balanced body temperature. As examples of low movement, Aura mentions working at your desk, standing and sitting in a chair. Also, if your skin temperature is too low, Aura may struggle to give you an accurate heart rate measurement. However, Aura says that anytime you're indoors or properly dressed in outdoor conditions, that this is very unlikely to be the case. Let's see if that is true. Here I displayed an overview of the heart rate accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and on the vertical axis the value according to the Aura Ring 3. The blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurement along the blue line at roughly the same value for the Aura Ring and the chest strap. You can ignore the red line for now. As you can see, the Aura Ring 3 shows pretty okay agreement with the Polar H10 chest strap. However, there do appear to be some measurements right here where the Aura Ring 3 detected a too high heart rate. Luckily, when I exported the data from the Aura Ring 3, it indicated if the quality of each measurement was good, average or bad. If I just keep those measurements that Aura indicates as being good measurements, we get the following plot. As you can see, we now have fewer measurements, however a larger percentage of them appears to be along the blue line. We can actually visualize this more intuitively if we look at them over time. That is what is displayed right here for the first day I wore both the Aura Ring 3 and the chest strap. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Aura Ring 3. As you can see these mostly agree pretty well, however there are several moments where the Aura Ring 3 shows a spike in heart rate. If we now keep only the measurements indicated as being good by Aura, we lose these spikes and we get this plot right here. 
The agreement now is even better, however we also have much more missing data. As you can see, for quite large parts of the day we now have no more data. Please be aware that I also removed the measurements of the chest strap if the Oring 3 had no measurements for a certain moment. Now this is a plot for the second day, including all data, and as you can see the agreement is quite okay, but the Oring shows some spikes in heart rate, for instance right here, right here, and also right here. If we now only keep the good measurements according to Aura, we lose these spikes, and we get this plot right here, and the agreement is much better. However, we are now missing a lot of measurements throughout the day as there are far fewer points in this plot. So daytime heart rate accuracy seems to be okay, however the O-ring sometimes detects false spikes in my heart rate. These can be removed by just keeping the high quality data, but it also means losing a lot of correct data. Aura mentions on their website that measuring your heart rate is not easy. They say that the further away you are from your arteries, the harder it is to get good heart rate accuracy. While other wrist-based wearables tend to measure it from the capillaries on top of your wrist, Aura says they measure it from the arteries in your fingers for more accurate readings. Now Aura is supposed to introduce heart rate monitoring during sports, however I do wonder if they can pull it off since they actually mention on their website that heart rate measurements are hard and currently they can only do it if you don't move too much. So how are they gonna do it when you're doing sports when you have to move a lot? I guess only time will tell if they can get it to work. What is also very important is measuring heart rate and heart rate variability during the night. This is something that Aura was already pretty good at with their previous version, the Aura Ring 2. Let's see how well the Aura Ring 3 does this and let's compare this to the Aura Ring 2. To test that I wore both versions of the Aura Ring and the ECG chest strap to bed for two nights. Let's start with the heart rate accuracy throughout the night which is displayed right here. Again on the horizontal axis is the chest strap and my Aura Ring 3 is on the vertical axis. The blue line indicates perfect agreement and the green line is the best fitting line through these points. As you can see there's very good agreement between the aura ring and the chest strap with almost all points along the blue line. The points at the bottom right here indicates those moments where the aura ring failed to pick up on my heart rate. These are the gaps that you normally see in your app. Here we can see the first night with the time along the horizontal axis and my heart rate on the vertical axis. Again the aura ring is in red and the polar ECG chest strap in blue. Overall this indeed shows quite a good agreement between the polar chest strap and the aura ring 3. Now this is the second night, again overall there's a pretty good agreement, however there was one spike in my heart rate that the aura ring 3 did not detect. This was likely a moment I got out of bed and as you can see a moment after that the aura ring is actually missing some data since it was not made to detect heart rate when you wake up during the night. Note that I excluded this measurement from the overview plot I showed you before just for clarity. All in all the heart rate accuracy during the night is pretty good, but how does this compare to the previous generation, the Aura Ring 2? That is displayed right here. On the left are the results for the Aura Ring 3, and on the right those of the Aura Ring 2. And as you can see the two plots look very similar. So both the Aura Ring 2 and 3 appear to perform about the same, which is not unexpected since they likely use the same algorithm and sensors. Next let's take a look at the accuracy of heart rate variability. Briefly, what is heart rate variability or HRV? Well, we all know what heart rate is. It's the number of heartbeats per minute. Say your heart beats 60 times in the last minute while you were watching this video. This does not mean that your heart beats perfectly at one beat per second. It just means that on average there were 60 beats per minute, but the time between heartbeats varies. It might be 1.2 seconds between this beat and the next and 0.8 seconds to the following heartbeat. To put this in really simple terms, a larger heart rate variability is actually better, assuming you don't have any underlying conditions. Stress, smoking and bad sleep quality for instance lower your heart rate variability and if you're more physically fit you tend to have a higher heart rate variability. Let's see how accurate the Aura Ring 3 is. That is displayed here. Each dot here is a single heart rate variability measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Aura Ring 3. As you can see overall there's a pretty good agreement especially at the lower heart rate variability values. However it seems that the higher the heart rate variability the less accurate the Aura Ring 3 is. Again the points here at the bottom are those moments that the Aura Ring 3 failed to pick up on my heart rate variability altogether. And we can see the same looking at the individual nights of which this is the first. Again in blue is the polar chest strap and in red the Aura Ring. As you can see some of the peaks in my heart rate variability are missed by the Aura Ring. And we can see the same even more clearly for the second night right here, especially in this middle part of my night. Overall we see that some of the peaks are not detected, but all in all this is not bad. So how does this compare to the Aura Ring 2 I wore at the same time? Let's take a look. That is displayed here. On the left are the results for the Aura Ring 3 and on the right the results for the Aura Ring 2. As you can see the results are somewhat better for the Aura Ring 2 than for the Aura Ring 3. Both of them are more accurate at lower heart rate variability values. And they both tend to miss some of my peaks in my heart rate variability, but as you can see overall the Aura Ring 2 shows slightly less deviation from the blue line. 
I would say that the Aura Ring 3 is pretty good at detecting my heart rate variability. It misses some of my peaks, but this is not very bad. The results for the Aura Ring 2 were slightly better, however I expect this was more by chance and a systematic problem. Perhaps the Aura Ring 3 was placed slightly less optimally on my index finger for one of the nights. Now before getting to the conclusions, I again wanted to thank Stefan and Max for making their data available because it really added a lot of value to this video. Go and check out both of their blogs which I'll link below. Stefan lives his life very intentionally and he does a lot of research into the ways that he optimizes his work habits, workouts and general health. He's one of the people I trust most when it comes to these things. Now Max does very similar analysis to the ones that I show on this channel. His blog looks retro and is definitely worth a look. Now the Aura Ring 3, similar to the Aura Ring 2, is a pretty solid device when it comes to health tracking. It's good at measuring your heart rate and heart rate variability while you sleep, which we also saw for the Aura Ring 2. The daytime heart rate tracking seems to be pretty decent when it takes a measurement, though it did show some missing values for me. I wore the ring on my right index finger where it's pretty snug most of the time. I actually ordered two Aura Rings, however the second one is still stuck at customs. That second ring is a size smaller and fits even more snugly on my left index finger, which might improve the results. I'm really curious to see how the Aura Ring 3 will perform during work out since it seems to have trouble measuring an accurate heart rate when you're moving. The new sleep tracking algorithm is not yet implemented and nothing appears to have changed compared to the sleep tracking of the Aura Ring 2. Overall though, I'm still a fan of what the Aura Ring can do, however I'm a bit disappointed that not much has changed yet compared to the Aura Ring 2 and we might need to wait months for much anticipated features to become available. So should you buy the Aura Ring 3? Well I still think the Aura Ring is a pretty solid choice when it comes to general health tracking. However as it stands I would say that you're currently better off with the Aura Ring 2 since not many features have been added yet and the Aura Ring 3 does include a subscription model. If the new sleep tracking turns out to be as good as promised and the heart rate tracking during workouts is good then I personally feel it would be worth it to pay that monthly fee. However there's no way to test these features yet so we'll have to see how well they work. Overall, I'm cautiously optimistic and I can still recommend the Aura Ring as an unobtrusive health tracker with a small footprint. However, given that we've not been able to test the new sleep tracking or heart rate tracking yet, it's not unreasonable to hold off on committing to a membership before the tests are in. But that's totally up to you and your own preference. Alternatively, you might actually be able to buy a used Aura Ring 2 for relatively little money and you don't need a subscription model for this. Just make sure the battery is still good. Also note that current Aura Ring 2 owners can upgrade for a limited time to a free lifetime membership that is included with the Aura Ring 3. I'll of course share tests of the new features of the Aura Ring 3 on this channel once they become available. In the meantime, if you like these kinds of videos, consider subscribing and also watching some of my other videos, like my video on the supposed performance of the new Aura Ring 3 sleep tracking algorithm. Of course, also like and comment if you feel like it and have a great day.